Have you ever thought to yourself, man, I love tips and tricks, and I wish I could have more of them with regard to ball pie? <laughs> it's so dumb. Such a dumb way to say it. Hi, baby. Are you checking out my beard? Have you ever thought to yourself, hey, I'm really into ball pythons, but I could use some additional tips and tricks? Well, guess what? This video's here for you. Welcome to the Green Room. I'm Bob Bledsoe. This is Delilah. She's my pastel freeway and she's beautiful. Today we're going to go kind of rapid fire because I have a lot of different subjects to cover. We're just going to give a tip or trick or two on different uh, subjects, including feeding, sheds, enclosures, bioactive, breeding, morph ID, handling, cleaning, and humidity. I think those are all the subjects that I came up with a little something for. So we're just going to go rapid fire, but first I want to get your opinion on something. We've been talking about sticker packs lately and I've had these white stickers. Hey, Delilah, can I show a sticker? <laughs> I've had these white stickers that I've been sending out, but I just ordered these black ones. So what do you like better, white or black? Should I order more of these white ones or should I stick with the black? Also keep in mind, I have these black ones that are staying black, just the round black ones, which are cool. Kent, what do you think of these two, black or white? Do not like either one. I don't trust that snake. All right, what about the baby sticker from the banana jean video? Worse, that one lulls you into a false sense of security because it's cute. It's exactly the kind of snake that would kill you in a second. Thanks, as always, for your input, Kent. Folks, tell me what you think is better, black or white on, on these. I'm running out of white, but I'll order more if you guys like them. Otherwise, we'll stick with black. This tips and tricks video, by the way, is going to have some different stuff than you'll see in some of the other videos, which you should watch any video that has tips for snakes or ball pythons or whatever are really helpful. Uh, I tried to come up with some different things for this one. So let's real quick talk about products, two, two products that I really like. One of them that seems to be catching on in the reptile world are these Govi uh, hygro hygrometer thermometers. I'm not sponsored or anything, but these you can get on Amazon for pretty cheap. I've talked about them before. Uh, they hook up to your Bluetooth so you can just check your phone and see what the temperature is and the history of the temperature. And also, I have one of these. I have a whole bunch of those other ones. I have one of these. This is a, this is a Wi-Fi one that's connected to the Wi-Fi. It's a lot more expensive, but when I'm out of town or when I'm just out of the house, I can check my phone and it'll tell me the temperature and humidity level of the entire room. The other product is this little vacuum sealer. I like to vacuum seal my the bags that I keep rodents in, frozen rodents. I don't want them to get freezer burned because if they get freezer burned, they are more likely to, um, what's the word, explode, I guess, uh, when a snake when a snake grabs it. So I don't want that happening. So I, so I vacuum seal all of my bags and this little device does a fantastic job of uh, vacuum sealing and it's it's small, I just keep it right here and uh, it's got a little button, does its thing, good to go. Quick feeding tip, especially for the young ones, I don't do this for the adults as much, but if you have babies that are on Reptichip and you're worried about them consuming Reptichip as they eat, for instance, Molly Malone likes to try to eat her rodents backwards so she gets her mouth and saliva all over the back of the rodent then she'll drop it and then covered in repti chip she'll try and swallow it again i don't want them eating all that repti chip especially if they're if they're babies so don't take them out and feed them in a different enclosure but just when they strike their their prey take your tongs and lift up on that prey that you're already holding just lift up on it flip their hide over and set the snake and the prey down in the upturned hide and usually they'll eat it there. Sometimes they'll drag it off, but most of the time they'll eat it in that nice, clean, upturned hide. And then when I do that on the cold side hide and I let them eat it there, and then when they retreat to their warm side, I go in and turn their hide over and uh, can do it without disturbing them. Shedding, here's a, here's a quick, and, I've, and I have mentioned this also before in other videos, but it works so well that it's, it's uh, worth repeating. And that is, if you have a snake with stuck shed, Put them in a damp pillowcase, warmish damp pillowcase, and you want to keep you. You don't want that to cool off too much. So it's best if you 
have them in a tub that has a heating pad underneath it or something like that just for the time being. Stick them in there for 20 minutes or so in this wet pillowcase, let them crawl around, and usually when you pull them back out, the shed will already be off. And if it's not already, be, if it's not already off, you can just, uh, you know, rub it gently and it'll come right off. Enclosures. Here's how I black out the sides of a, a clear tub, and you can do this with tanks also. Uh, on the side of one of my tubs, by the way, these are the upgrade tubs for Delilah here and Evie, who are my relatively new snakes. They just came out of quarantine. So on one side of Evie's tub, I just put a little PVC. I just had some. I, I cut PVC and, and hot glued it there. And I can pop that off at any time if I want to later. And then for the tops, just cloth, just drape a cloth over there. That works for one side and the top, and then I can just pull the cloth off. Same with Lydia and Molly's enclosures. They just have a like a placemat on top of theirs. I don't have Lydia and Molly's sides blocked off because they're pretty confident snakes. And plus they have lots of foliage in their enclosure, so they're not always looking out. But I do block off the tops because those are low and every time I pass by, it's gonna look like a big predator, like a hawk coming over or something. I don't wanna scare them. Here's a bioactive tip that I get asked about a lot. People say that the problem with bioactive is you can't get your snake down on a heat mat because there's too much substrate. And there is a lot. There's about six inches worth of substrate in there. And I've mentioned before that I have a subterranean hide for the inspector so that he can go down to the mat level. And the way I do that is I've just dug out, I've tried it a, a bunch of different ways. I've tried to actually have the hide buried underground. But the problem is if I need to get to him and he's in that hide, I, can't, I have to destroy the whole thing and then I have to rebuild it and it's a pain. So what I've got right now is just a regular black hide that's covered with a few pieces of cork bark and, uh, and then like a, a piece of wood that acts as a tunnel. But that way I can just pull that stuff out really quick and grab him if I need to and then put it back together. It's pretty simple. But it gets him down to the mat and also it's pretty humid down there. So it's more humid. If his, if his enclosure is 50% humidity, it's probably going to be closer to 80% in that uh, subterranean hide. So that gets him down to the mat. He's at 90 degrees and like between probably 70 and 80% humidity and he is good to go down there. Quick breeding tip. Now I'm not the guy to take breeding tips from because it, as much as I do a ton of research, this is my first year breeding so I'm not super experienced with it. But I will tell you this, this is something that comes up a lot because when we watch videos of breeders and, and all these how to's and things like that, these are usually from big breeders that have very empty enclosures. They've got their snake and a water bowl and they can easily just put a snake in the enclosure, close it and they're done. But what if you have a small collection like me and you're trying to give your snakes hides and different enrichment items and stuff like that? Do you take the hides out? Do you keep them in? What do you do? So my for my three females that are breeding right now, they all have hides. They don't need them. They'll eat without the hides. So it's not, you know, they could go either way. But I've noticed that when I put a hide in there, they use it. So I don't mind giving them hides. Uh, but anyway, so their enclosures have two hides normally and, and some enrichment things. When I go to pair them, I pull everything out because you don't want them hiding. You want them to be focused on what they're supposed to be doing. So everything gets pulled out except for the water dish and usually the, the thermometer thing stays in there too. Uh, but it just gets everything out of the way. That's what I recommend you do. There's a lot of questions about that online from, from people not knowing whether to keep hides in or pull them out. Pull them out. Next subject is morph identification. This is not something that I'm an expert at by any means, but here's a really good way to practice it on Morph Market. Okay, you guys, here's something that took me a while to figure out on Morph Market. Go up here to Options on the Morph Market site. Uh, under Categories, make sure you're on Ball Pythons, otherwise this doesn't work. Now, you can look at different traits that are currently for sale. So let's say I wanted to see what Orange Dream and Banana looked like together. I would go into the Including part and go Banana. It'll fill it in for you. If it doesn't fill it in for you, that's because you don't have your category in ball pythons checked. Uh, and then you can come up here to trait count also and limit your, your number of genes. We'll keep it wide open though. And we'll see what banana and orange dream look like together with a whole bunch of other genes. So now you can scroll through and there's probably a bunch of pages of this, yeah. Um, and you can start to, to look and see what this looks like. But let's say that you've got, you wanna see a combo that's a little bit more rare, like let's say banana and sunset. You click on here to see what's currently for sale, and there's nothing for sale, but watch this. 
This is what took me a while. Because you have to have an account with Morph Market. It's a free account. It just takes a minute to sign up, but you got to have one. Otherwise, this doesn't work. So come over here to Availability, where it says For Sale. You can go down to All, which is going to show you anything that's ever been up on Morph Market that sold and whatever. So we've got four. There's There's been four Banana Sunsets that have been up on Morph Market. Look at this one, $11,000. This one's $6,000. This one went for eleven. dollars And these two are Inquire, uh, which never means cheap. All right, little handling pro tip. Make sure that when you are when you go to pick up your snake, make sure that you don't have a ton of like perfume or cologne or if you've just washed your hands with soap that has a strong odor to it, they're really sensitive to odors and you want them to get used to what you actually smell like, not all these things masking your, your normal scent. So I try to rinse off as much as possible. If I've just been dealing with food, I'll take a, I've got a um, stainless steel bar that, that looks like a bar of soap, but it's just stainless steel. And that's designed to, if you have like garlic or fish smell on your hands or onions or something, it'll get that right off. Just rub it on stainless steel. Little, little kitchen pro tip for you. Uh, but I use that a lot to get like kitchen smells off my hands. But then I rinse my hands really well if I've just used soap or something like that. And then for guys with beards, if you use beard oil, which is always scented, I mean, maybe not always, but mine is. I'm really careful about that. The inspector likes to crawl through my beard. The other, the other snakes are kind of don't like the feel of the hair, but the inspector likes to go around my neck and then he'll pop his head through my beard like this. And uh, I don't want him to have beard oil on his face. Like it's a strong scent and he doesn't need beard oil on him. So, <laughs> so I make sure that I don't have that in when I'm, if I'm handling him. Uh, because I know he's probably going to go through my beard. Here's a little cleaning tip, you guys. I, I go through my tubs and clean them, give them a full clean and full change about once a month. And, uh, you know, I spot clean in between that, but, but full change, everything once a month. And for especially the babies that kind of need to be used to their home, uh, one thing that I do is I will clean their hides at a different time. So if I, if I have a full tub, clean out, change everything. I leave the hides as is because it'll still smell like them at least. Uh, and they'll still feel at home a little bit rather than removing all scents altogether. And then a few days later, I might, I might clean the hides. Or alternatively, if your snake has just shed, you can keep that shed, clean their tub out, clean their hides, everything, throw the shed back in. And that, that just gives them a little bit of a uh, scent of their own. It's just something, I mean, I don't know how big of a difference it makes, but I think for a snake that you want them to feel at comfortable and you want them to feel at home and comfortable all the time, I think removing every trace of the snake's scent from their enclosure uh, is, is potentially stressful. So I try not to do that, especially for the babies. Last pro tip in this list, you guys, has to do with humidity and glass enclosures. A lot of people say that glass is terrible for humidity, but I'm here to tell you, glass holds humidity really well. Glass is great. It's the design of glass enclosures that are the problem. It's the mesh top that's the problem. Glass is so good at holding humidity that they build fish tanks out of them. So, so it's, it's, the glass is fine. Your mesh top needs to be, and, and you'll see this everywhere else, it needs to be covered with, with uh, foil tape. That's what a lot of people do if they, if they need to fully cover it. Now for me, I don't need to fully cover mine because mine holds humidity pretty well. But if I had the, the mesh top fully uncovered, it would release too much humidity. So I don't need the top of my screen covered completely, but three out of the four sections right now are covered with plastic that I just found at the hardware store. I wanted clear plastic because I've got grow lights that, that are shining through that for the plants and I didn't want to cover that up. So that works just fine. Now, humidity does escape through the fourth mesh section that's not covered and through the sides of those others, but that keeps the humidity in enough. So if you don't need to completely block off your top, you might consider clear plastic. All right, Kent, uh, I don't want to leave you out. Do you have any tips or tricks that you could give us with regard to ball pythons? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, wear protective gear, you know, at least a helmet.
You showed up your first day in a bee suit. Yeah, admittedly that was a bad idea. I realized right away a python will shred a bee suit. It's just not enough protection. You've never kept bees. I don't know why you even have a bee suit. You know, in case I go hiking or camping or just end up in the forest at all. So your tip so far then is to wear a helmet. Anything else? I mean, just, you know, stay away from them at all costs. And if you do end up with a ball python at your house, I think just any type of body armor would be good, which of course adds to the cost of the snake when you have to buy a suit of armor at a renaissance festival. That's not cheap, which is why I don't recommend ball pythons. I think we're getting off track here. I disagree. Folks, there you have it. Some tips and tricks on ball pythons from me, some from Kent. If you liked this video, let me know because I could easily do a tips and tricks too. There's a lot of things that I could talk about there. Also, if you like this video, please hit the like button. That's really helpful. And if you want to subscribe, if you want to get notified when, you, when, when I upload a weekly video, hit the subscribe button and uh, it would be great to have you on board. Thanks for watching.